Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today our topic of discussion is from general pathology which is granulomatous inflammation. First we see its definition. Granulomatous inflammation is a distinctive pattern of chronic inflammation characterized by the aggregate of activated macrophages with scattered lymphocytes and it is sometimes associated with the central necrosis. So first we see that granulomatous inflammation is an outcome of the chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation sometimes leads to the granuloma formation or granulomatous inflammation if the injurious particle is not removed. Now we see the mechanism of the granuloma formation. There are basically two arms of the immunity in the body. The first one is the cell mediated immunity and the second one is the humoral immunity. Cell mediated immunity is the prime role player here. So first we discuss the cell mediated immunity. On the left side of the figure you can see that poorly degradable antigen leads to the sequestration with the antigen presenting cell. So the question here arises that what is an antigen presenting cell? Antigen presenting cell is a cell that displays antigens complexed with the major histocompatibility complex on their surfaces. And these antigen presenting cells then interacts with the T cells in the second step. T cells recognize these complexes using their T cell receptors and then release the cytokines. These, the release of the cytokines leads to the recruitment of the activated macrophages with epithelioid cells and the giant cell formation which in turn leads to the epithelioid granuloma formation. So, uh, now we'll see that what is an epithelioid cell and what is a giant cell. Epithelioid cells are basically uh, mac activated macrophages in granuloma that have pink granular cytoplasm with indistinct cell boundaries. These are called epithelioid cells because of their resemblance with the epithelia. And uh, what is a giant cell? Giant cell is a multinucleated large cell formed by the union of the several cells usually histiocytes. Now we see the humoral immunity. Insoluble antigen antibody formation leads to the epithelioid formation or if the complement pathway includes which uh, includes the recruitment of the neutrophils the result is the same epithelioid granuloma formation. Now we see the components of the granuloma. In the figure you can see that there is a central area of the necrosis with a collar of the epithelioid cells with an outer collar of the lymphocytes and multinucleated giant cells are also present there. You can see there are multiple nucle nucleus in these cells. Now we see the foreign body granuloma. Foreign body granuloma results from the relatively inert foreign bodies and there is absence of the T-cell mediated immune response found around the materials such as talcs, sutures, splinters, etc. They do not incite any specific inflammation or immune response. Foreign materials can be identified in the center of granuloma as the foreign material still persists that leads to the formation of granuloma. And the last one is that we can see it through the polarized light. Next we will discuss the mechanism of the immune granuloma formation. So just focus on the figure we can see an antigen presenting cell there and there is an indigestible antigenic material in it as the arrowhead is pointing toward it. And the APC or the antigen presenting cell also presents antigen on its surface and this antigen is presented to the CD4 positive cell or T helper 1 cells. T helper 1 cells then produces cytokines and these cytokines are tumor necrosing factor interferon gamma and interleukin 2. Interferon gamma plays an important role in activating macrophages and transforming them to the epithelioid cells and multinucleate giant cells as we have discussed before. As we have seen previously that the central area of the granuloma formation is necrotic area and this necrosis might be caseous. What is caseous necrosis? In caseous necrosis, degradative tissue maintains a cheese-like appearance and it is yellowish in appearance. So, the granuloma might be 
caseating granuloma or non caseating granuloma we'll discuss its two key differences caseating granuloma a granuloma with such a center that has undergone caseous necrosis is known as caseating granuloma non caseating granuloma all granulomas that do not have a center that have undergone caseating necrosis are called non caseating granulomas the second difference is caseating granulomas occur typically in tuberculosis and non caseating granulomas occur in disease conditions like sarcoidosis crohn's disease and leprosy as we can see in this figure that this yellowish area in the lung is the caseous necrosis and in the other figure we can also see a yellowish caseous necrotic area in it in the end we see the necrosis and fibrosis resulting from the granuloma formation necrosis may be a feature of some granulomatous conditions like tuberculosis there is always central caseous necrosis why the necrosis occurs the necrosis occurs due to the hypoxia and free radical injury that leads to the central zone of necrosis next we see the fibrosis why fibrosis occurs fibrosis occurs because the injured cell does not have the full capacity to regenerate to its original extent that's why the fibrosis occurs healing by the proliferating fibroblast at the periphery of the granuloma and it occurs in the rheumatoid arthritis you can share your queries regarding the granulomatous inflammation in the comment section thank you so much